Sedation is a critical component of modern medicine, helping patients relax, stay calm, or even sleep during medical procedures. But have you ever wondered how it actually works? Let's dive deep into the science of sedation. Today, we're going to delve into the fascinating world of sedation. We'll begin by exploring the different types of sedatives used in medical procedures and how they work in the brain. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and let's explore the science of sedation. In your brain, there are tiny cells called neurons that communicate with each other to make everything work properly, like thinking, feeling, and moving. When these neurons get too excited, it can lead to anxiety, stress, or even seizures. Now, there's a special messenger in your brain called GABA, gamma-aminobutyric acid. Think of GABA as the traffic cop of your brain. Its job is to calm things down when they get too hectic. Imagine your neurons as cars on a busy road. Sometimes, these cars start honking too much and causing chaos. That's when GABA steps in. It's like GABA saying, hey, calm down, everyone. When GABA binds to its receptors on neurons, it tells them to slow down and relax. Now, certain medications, like benzodiazepines, think of them as special helpers, can boost GABA's calming effect. They help GABA work better, like giving the traffic cop a megaphone to calm the noisy cars more effectively. So, when these medications enhance the GABAergic system, they help reduce anxiety, induce sleepiness, or even make you feel relaxed during medical procedures. It's like having a super-efficient traffic cop in your brain, keeping everything calm and under control. Now, this is just one mechanism that leads to sedation. Another crucial system involved in sedation is the monoaminergic system. Imagine serotonin, dopamine, and norepinephrine as messengers in your brain, controlling your mood, pleasure, and alertness. When we feel awake and alert, these messengers are buzzing around, keeping us focused. But when we want to calm down or sleep, we need fewer messengers to be active. Now, certain medications, like antihistamines, work by calming these messengers down. They do this by blocking certain receptors that these messengers use to communicate. It's like putting a lid on a pot to stop it from boiling over. As a result, you start feeling drowsy, your mind becomes quieter, and you may even drift off to sleep. Additionally, there's the endocannabinoid system, which influences sleep, mood, and appetite. Cannabinoids, like those found in marijuana, interact with this system. When activated, they can make you feel relaxed and drowsy. And don't forget about the opioid system. Opioids, like morphine or fentanyl, interact with receptors in your brain and spinal cord to dull pain and make you feel sleepy. So, when it comes to sedation, it's not just about calming down one system. It's about a symphony of different systems working together to help you relax, feel less anxious, and maybe even drift off into a peaceful sleep. Let's switch gears and explore the different types of sedatives used in medical procedures. From benzodiazepines to opioids, each type of sedative works in a unique way to induce sedation and relaxation. But how do they differ from each other? And what are the potential side effects of each type of sedative? To learn more, click on the next one. Keep learning and stay awake.